Recently, I've started using Claude 3 instead of ChatGPT. I still use both of them, but Claude 3 has been showing some really nice results for me. And I found this tool, which is a meta prompt creator, prompt optimizer, advanced prompt template creator, however you wanna call it, posted by Moritz Krem right here, but it's posted as a Google collab, which means if you walk away for a few minutes, you have to restart the whole thing and there's installations, it's, it's a pain. So I decided to bring this local and I made a video for members showing all the steps exactly how to do that. But I didn't want to stop there. I didn't want to just have it local. I wanted to host this somewhere so that I can easily access it at any time at a URL and then boom, it's like going to ChatGPT, but now it's my own hosted text box that's going to generate a prompt template for me and expand the prompt and give me better results. Now I come from a .NET background. Hosting a .NET app or a JavaScript app is easy for me, but I've only been doing Python for a couple of years and hosting a Python web app, <laughs> I don't know where to start with that. So I went to ChatGPT because, well, it knows things, all right? I use it. I realized the irony here that I didn't go to Claude for this, but bear with me. ChatGPT suggested I use Flask. Flask is like a framework for running Python projects as a web app. And that would be perfect for this as opposed to something like Django where there's just a lot of cruft and a lot of things that I didn't need. I just needed to host a text box. So ChatGPT walked me through getting an environment set up installing Flask, the folder structure I needed. All I needed to do was just drop that script that I created. You know, instead of running a Google collab, I created that Python script. I referenced it from the Flask app. This is the Flask app right here. It's really simple. You define a route, you define what template, uh, the HTML you want to show for that route. And here is the run script, which is a post operation. After you push the button on that page, this script runs, which calls to my script, which in turn calls to the Claude API and returns me the results. And with ChatGPT helping me out, I was able to get to this point. I admit, this is not pretty, but it's not for that. I could style it with CSS if I really wanted to. Don't want to, I just want a text box. I'm not converting it into a product. Although I could get some funding. It'll be a unicorn billion dollar startup. What am I doing here? What am I, why am I on YouTube? So one thing you gotta know is that Anthropic API you gotta pay for it. It doesn't cost a huge amount, but you still have to pay for it. You buy credits and then you use the API, which is slightly different than uh, the way the open API API works, where you just give them your credit card and set a limit. Here you have to buy credits ahead of time, which I did. By the way, I'm gonna leave a link down below to my application. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm gonna load up that credit to, uh, I don't know, a hundred bucks. And when this video goes live, you all can uh, start using it until the credits run out and then I'll be done with it. Post your results down below if you found it useful or not. If you all crash it, sorry, that's not my problem. <laughs> So here's an example of it working. Wish somebody a happy birthday. Now what's cool about this particular meta prompt is that it asks you to fill in certain variables for the expanded prompt, the prompt template that it generates. You ask it, write a birthday greeting for somebody. And then it figures out, well, you need a name for a birthday greeting, right? So it's gonna come back, give you a more detailed prompt with the instructions, and it's going to give you some variables to fill in, multiple variables if need be. Like in this case, recipient. We need the name of the person that's getting the birthday greeting. So it asks you to fill that in. And if there's multiple variables, it's gonna ask you each one. And then it goes out to the API one more time and finally gives you the final result. Here's a birthday wish for Jack. Happy birthday, Jack. You are such a kind, solid person, blah, 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 blah. Many happy returns, my friend. Have an amazing day. Next thing I needed to do was figure out how to host this. And I didn't want to run Flask each time I needed to use this thing. I didn't know how to do that part either. So I needed to find where I can host a Python Flask app and make it accessible to the outside world via a browser. Now I happen to have a sponsorship from Hostinger and they offer things like website hosting, AI generated website creation, but I wanted to use their virtual private server so I can host my app in it. I set up a virtual private server. It gave me a public URL to use. I securely transferred the files over. Then I was kind of stuck because, well, I might have the Flask app running locally on that server, on that Ubuntu virtual server, but how do I expose that to the outside world? Well, what I found on Hostinger's VPS dashboard is an AI assistant, and this 
is what saved my butt. Basically, this is like a custom AI that's going to help you and take you through the steps of setting things up if you're not familiar with it. So this was perfect. I went to the AI, I asked how to upload my Flask app and how to host my Flask app. And it gave me all the steps on how to install everything. And it told me that I should use Nginx, which is an open source software for web serving, reverse proxying, caching, load balancing, media streaming, and more. Basically, it does everything for you for hosting these types of projects. And now not just Python projects, it can do pretty much anything. It can be a web server. I'm gonna use Nginx for proxying from the internet. There's gonna be a public IP, which is on Hostinger's dashboard. I wanna be able to type that IP address into a browser and web requests by default go on port 80. So I wanna take port 80 and whenever Nginx sees port 80, it's going to forward it to my Flask application, which is running on a different port. So it's gonna do that for me automatically. And thanks to that AI assistant, I got Nginx running just like this. This is the default page for Nginx. Everything is working properly. Uh, the only thing I didn't have set up properly initially was Nginx configuration, which needed my server name or domain or IP address, and I needed to use the proper port. And after I changed those things, bam, there's my application. Like I said, not pretty, not designed to be pretty. And this was generated by ChatGPT. So luckily it gave me a text box with a button. That's all I needed to do. All this other stuff it made up. Finally, I could ask it my most burning question. Give me five best frameworks to build web apps. This is my task, of course, but it's going to expand that into a prompt template with a variable. And the topic is, well, I didn't really want to do a topic here, but whatever, it's gonna ask me for a topic. I just said web development. Boom, after a little while, that prompt came back with this answer, React, Vue, Angular, ASP.NET Core, Ruby on Rails. I've done all these except for Ruby on Rails and I don't even wanna do Ruby on Rails. I don't want to, you can't pay me enough to try that. I'll do PHP before I touch Ruby on Rails. By the way, I do have memberships on this channel. Members get early access to videos as well as detailed walkthroughs. If you're interested, hit the join button down below or you can just subscribe to the channel. Now, if you're interested in website hosting or virtual private server, which is what I used here, go to hostinger.com and I have a coupon code for you. Under hosting, you can get a new hosting plan. Even the business plan is not very expensive, $3.99 a month. Here you get NVMe storage, so much faster storage and you get more of it. You get free unlimited SSL. You get free CDN. We didn't use a CDN for my my little project, but if you're hosting a website, you probably host images or your JavaScript on a CDN, so it's five times faster than just regular hosting and serving it from the server each time. And you get that for free with a business plan. Now, if you're interested in the VPS that I used, go to the VPS tab, get a new VPS plan, and the KVM2 is the most popular one. $6.99 a month is still actually really inexpensive. Host your projects in there, and then you get root access and full control of the entire OS. You can do whatever you want. If you want to take advantage of my coupon code, go to hostinger.com slash Alex Ziskind. I left a link in the description down below. And when you select your plan, you can go to the coupon code right here, type in Alex Ziskind, hit apply. And now my coupon code is applied. And then you can proceed with the checkout. Again, thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring this portion of the video. Thanks for watching, folks. Check out one of my other videos right over here. And I'll see you next time.